The best artists in history used real world references when crafting their masterpieces, and so should you. Hey, what's up? I'm David Aryev, and I'm a 3D motion designer and educator, and I'm gonna help you make your renders better. In this video, you'll learn how to accurately create shaders that mimic properties of car paint, improve the look of wet road materials, create believable plant shaders with both transmissive and glossy components, improve rust shaders, and create realistic ice, water, and snow shaders. If you want more ideas to improve your renders, make sure to grab our PDF of 10 tips in the description. Now let's get started. Often we think that because we live in reality, we know what different materials should look like, but that's often far from the truth when we're pressed to recreate them in 3D. For example, let's take a look at this flying car in my cyberpunk scene. It looks pretty good, and if we didn't look at references, we might just stop here. But upon further inspection, it's pretty clear that cars are more reflective than this, and that's due to the clear coat on top of the paint. Okay, so in Octane, that's not too difficult to do. We can create a composite material here and just have a mirror surface that we mix into the paint layer with a falloff node so that the whole car isn't overly reflective, but on the edges, it's super shiny. So far so good, but if we look closely at the underlying layer of car paint, we'll realize that there's another property going on here that we're missing, which is that the paint often sparkles and reflects light at all different angles, giving a kind of glittery effect. So to do that, there are these normal maps out there that look like this, also known as flake maps, which just allow the light to reflect at a ton of different angles. Once we add that in, this is what we get, and this resembles a car paint much more closely. Here's what it looks like before the flakes and after, and here's a close-up before and after. Here's another good one. I've got this wet asphalt, and I'm successfully mixing between a perfectly shiny version of the pavement and a rough version, but something seems off. If we look at photos of wet pavement, often there's more of a sheen and a transition between the wet and dry areas. So just by taking our mask that's mixing between the two materials and using it in the bump channel, we get a much more realistic result. Plants can be tricky too. Here's a pretty okay looking scene with some trees and leaves being strongly backlit by the sun, but when we Google photos of backlit leaves, we realize because they're so thin, the light comes through them a ton. So let's add these diffuse textures for the leaves and grass into the transmission channel for each material. Again, this will just allow the sunlight to pass through the leaves and create that nice backlit look. Here's the before and after. And if we're in path tracing mode, which allows for true global illumination, this will look even better. Okay, so we're getting there, but leaves are often very waxy and have a glossy component too. And if we look at these images, we'll see that they can be super shiny. Here's a great reference that shows both transmissive and glossy leaves in the same shot. So let's try to match that. If we create a composite or mixed material, we can do a 50% blend between a glossy version of the leaf and a transmissive version. Here's a close up before and after. So now this is looking great. And here's another trick, this might be even easier with the Octane Universal Material, we can get all of that in one go without having to create a mix between the two materials. All we have to do is make sure that the metallic slider is all the way down so the leaves aren't metallic. And then just plug in that diffuse texture into the transmission channel, as well as playing with the amount of roughness. In this scene here, we've got a similar issue where the lanterns look really nice, but the lights inside them aren't coming through. Many artists would be tempted to just set the exterior walls of the lantern to an emissive material, but that would just blow everything out to white, and we wouldn't see the nice glowy paper texture. So let's keep the light inside the lantern and just do the same trick where we set the diffuse map to the transmission channel as well, and suddenly we're getting lanterns that look realistic. Next, let's look at a rusty material. Here, the rust shader is pretty good. It's got a ton of variation and areas that are clearly rusty with others that are more metallic in color. But when looking at images of real rust, it should be clear that the rusty sections are very rough or diffuse in nature and block the shininess of the metal. So let's see if we can recreate that here. If we really clamp this down and make sure that the rusty material has almost no reflection, we're in a much better spot. Here's the before and after. Finally, let's take a look at this scene with ice, water, and snow. The water looks pretty good as I've added in a bump to create some ripples, but if we look at a shot of the ocean, for instance, the shot of the Caribbean, it's clear that water of different depths has different colors, and that's due to different depths absorbing more and more light. So for that, we need two things. We need to add in the absorption component, and we need to create a surface underneath the water. Here with a displaced icy surface underneath, we're getting a bit closer, and we could try our familiar transmission trick to colorize the water, 
And here I've just added a daylight so we can see this next difference more clearly, but the transmission isn't getting us much color variation. By clicking here on the medium tab and then hitting the absorption button, as well as reducing the density and adding in an RGB spectrum with a blue color, we get that look of varying depths and color. Next, let's dial in the ice. And for this, I've just added in a bunch of rocks from Megascans. Now, if we just use the same material as the water without the bump ripples, we'll get a bit closer, but it's overly see-through. We need the ice to look more cloudy like these references. Here I've removed the transmission color because we'll do that with the scattering medium instead. And instead of an absorption medium, which only changes the color based on depth, let's add a scattering medium here for real subsurface scattering and get that cloudy look. And we'll add in an RGB spectrum into both the absorption and the scattering. With the scattering, the brighter the color is, the more subsurface scattering it creates. So I just use a pure white and control the look of the scattering overall here with the density. And in the absorption, we'll make sure that we've got that nice blue color again. One more time, the absorption parameter acts to create various colors depending on depth, and the white color we piped into the scattering allows the light to bounce around inside the material and from the material to get cloudy, and finally the density controls how deep the light can penetrate. Now we're looking much icier. Let's also add in a cracked black and white map to the roughness, so that gets a bunch more detail, as well as adding back in the normal maps that come from the Megascans rocks to create even more surface detail. Okay, now for the snow. If we look at photos of snow on ice, we can see that the snow blocks the reflection and feels much more diffuse or rough in nature. So let's try for that. If we right click, we can convert this material to a submaterial and begin creating a composite shader. The submaterial just allows us to add this material into a composite material because a regular material won't pipe into a composite material. Let's use a fall off map set to normal versus vector 90 degrees to create a slope effect where the flat facing surfaces get the color black and the vertical surfaces get the color white. And then we'll use this as a mask that blends between the snow shader and the ice shader. For the snow shader, we don't want this cracked roughness map or the normal map, but we could use our flakes map from before because as you see here in this reference, snow often gets sparkly just like our car paint due to reflecting the light at so many different angles. So here's before the snow and after, and then with the flakes. And here's a close up. Now we've got a pretty awesome looking scene, I have to say, and all thanks to checking ourselves with reference images. By keeping these tips in mind, you'll be well on your way to consistently creating awesome renders. If you want to learn more ways to improve your renders, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we drop the next tip.